Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling situation happening in the Middle East after Israel's third strike against the Syrian military. You cannot help but wonder, are we on the verge of seeing prophecy from the Gog of Magog war, war, Ezekiel 38? Are we about to see prophecy being fulfilled? Or are we about to witness the Vatican's version of prophecy being manufactured in order to bring about their own ideology as they present a false messiah to Israel. Follow this story closely as I share some of these insights with you in the latest breaking news today. It says here, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee about, see, uh, see, and I will turn you around and put the natati chachaim, uh, chachaim, which is I will give you, actually, not put, but give you hooks in your jaws, and I will bring you forth and thy army, horses and horsemen, and all them clothed most gorgeously, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords. Persia, Cush, put, uh, put with them, and all of them with shield and helmet. Now, many people as we look at this think automatically that the Gog of Magog is Russia, and that, of course, Persia being Iran, and these different countries here that are allied together, that they are being drawn into this battle here against Israel, that they're going to be led down by hooks in their jaws. Well, you know, the thing is, is because of the way the prophecy is worded, I think the Vatican has taken advantage of the situation, and they are trying to steer Russia into a battle directly with Israel in order to feel, fulfill prophecy the way they believe it should be fulfilled. Now, I say this because we're looking at Persia, Kush, and, uh, and put with them. Keep in mind, don't forget, uh, I don't believe that Russia is Magog. And clearly there's many biblical uh, scholars that believe that it is Turkey. But the, pre, the chief prince of these, I do believe, comes right out of the Vatican itself. And if you'll notice, when Qatar became a major ordeal, who sided with Qatar against the Saudis, against the United States? It was Turkey and Iran. There's your alliance. It's not Russia and Iran, although Russia and Iran are allies. I agree with that. But eventually, Turkey, who is pretending to be a ally to Israel right now is actually an enemy of Israel and always has been. They've only been playing this card because the Vatican is going to take advantage of those inside of Turkey that can help bring about a third temple. That's none other than Adnan Akhtar, who's been uh, pampering all the Israeli rabbis that go to him to get them all buttered up to bring about a false peace in the region. I'm going to share with you, this isn't just Steve's idea, Steve Benoon's idea, this is coming from very well-respected former Israeli journalists because they've all been killed. I say killed as well. Joel Bainerman dying in his 50s, Barry Chamish. Barry Chamish, a friend of mine, told me they were trying to kill him. On many occasions, did not succeed, but tried in vain to kill him and believed that at his last moment that they were still out to kill him. He said it to me privately on the telephone. We lived only a couple hours apart from each other in Florida there. Now, let me share some things here with you, though. Very serious situation. Even, I'm going to go into some things that Chris Putnam uh, had to say. He's a late guy as well. Why? I don't know. I don't know the cause of his death. Haven't really looked into that. But I know that Chris died at 51 years old, much like Joel Bainerman. But he was also there exposing Rome's plot and plans that were going on. Now, let me share with you why I believe this is happening. Remember now. Israel just got a huge amount of money from Barack Obama. Also received all these new F-35s. Germany moving their aircraft from Turkey down into Jordan. 
the Dutch military from Holland moving down their military forces into Jordan. The Norwegian forces, British, U.S. Special Forces, all inside of Jordan and even crossed over into Syria, set up their bases at Al-Tant, for they have also been launching attacks against the proxies of uh, the forces uh, that are fighting uh, with Hezbollah and the Iranian forces. They've been, they've been targeting them as well, trying to get Iran drawn into a conflict and as I have shared with you, the king of the north and the king of the south, out of Daniel's prophecy, chapter 11, they put the king of the south pushes with him, Imam. And they'll come over him like a whirlwind, a storm with their chariots and horsemen and drop them in with their big C-130s or C-17s, the gorilla. I forget the exact number of that aircraft that they'll bring over there to bring in all this regiment. To do what? They're coming in there to take down Israel's enemies. Iran, Syria, Lebanon, all three of them they're going to take out with one blow. But Israel may be drawn into this war as well. In fact, Israel is moving tanks into the Golan right now because of the attacks that they've already launched on the Syrian military concerned that there is going to be a retaliation. I don't think Syria has it in them to be able to retaliate other than Scud missiles. And, and if they do that, then they know the Israeli army is coming. Syria is trying to play this down even though they're suffering losses because if Russia doesn't have their back, then they're going to be sitting ducks and Russia doesn't want to get involved because Russia knows they're trying to bring this war about and that they're trying to make it look like Russia is Magog. Don't kid yourself. These guys know exactly what's going on in this whole scheme of things. So Israel News Online reports Netanyahu to Putin, Israeli airstrikes in Syria will continue. He said as long as there's spillover inside of the Golan, we will continue. But you know what's really weird? RT in the Russian language, you don't always get the good stuff in the English language on RT because they have to be a little bit more careful because we don't have as much freedom of speech in America as we think we do. We just think we have it, but really don't. But Russian RT is questioning why is the United States and Israel both attacking the Syrian military? They're trying to draw them into conflict so that they can bring down Damascus, so they can bring down Iran and Hezbollah as well. Did you know that Israel also targeted a military weapons uh, uh, vehicle on the other side of Palmyra? That's 200 kilometers from the Israeli border inside of the Syrian territory. Israel's, you know, they're taking advantage of the fact that they are allies with Russia as well. But something could end up going down on this. Now, South Front also did an article today. Uh, Syrian War Report, June 26, 2017. Israel supports militant ad advance in Quenetra. Quenetra, by the way, right there on the Golan border there. I mean, you could almost, from the Overlook Mountain that I've been there many times watching the, the battles rage on, uh, you know, I, I, you could almost throw a rock to the, to, to the border there. You're so close. But the Al-Bath is an area that they've been trying to get control of. And uh, according to the uh, South Front here, the Free Syrian Army uh, launched a large-scale advance against the Syrian Arab Army in the province of Quenetra. The militants had formed an operation room named Jayesh Muhammad for the purpose and said that their aim was to capture Al-Bath town and to reach the countryside of Damascus. Again, all of these you can see there, but they weren't having any success. And the only way to get success was to stop the Syrian military that had two tanks holding them back, they had some, uh, uh, also some other rocket systems there, and so Israel took them, took them all out. So, uh, again, I know I, I love my people, but I, I am against Israel's enemies, and our major enemy that Israel has is not Syria, it's the Vatican, and of course the Vatican is being backed up by the U.S., the British, the Germans, all these different nations that are coming in there and they're doing it for what? They're doing the Vatican's bid to make sure that Israel's enemies are destroyed, that they bring about a new two-state solution, that they bring about, well, you know what, I'll tell you what, instead of me saying it, let's, let's do this here. I want to read to you some, again, I've read it to you for days now, but you've got to hear this. This is Joel Bainerman. And this was on Barry Chamish's website. Uh, he passed away as well, but Joel Bainerman died, I think, around 54, 56 years old. 
uh, the, the Israeli journalist, this is not just Steve Benoon, this is an Israeli journalist, Barry Chamish served in the Israeli military, fought in the war with Lebanon, and he also constantly was exposing. In fact, one of the best books you could read by Barry Chamish is called Israel's, uh, the, uh, the Last Days of Israel or Israel's Last Days, I believe is the name of the book by Barry Chamesh, exposing exactly what they're doing, how Shimon Perez was involved in all of this, how that he was even, uh, who, who, who uh, assassinated Yitzhak Rabin. But you have to look at the other book there, Israel's Last Days, uh, that Barry Chamesh writes to really get a good understanding of what was going on. Major conspiracy. And Shimon Perez was a Vatican puppet from the beginning, went to a Jesuit school. That was report, uh, re, uh, actually written in Yitzhak Rabin's autobiography that he was uh, uh, went to a Jesuit school. And so those that were trying to do the right thing for Israel, like Rabin was, uh, I don't say I agree with everything that he was doing, but nonetheless, at least he was trying to be more uh, for the Jewish people. But Shimon Perez was nothing but for the Vatican. Let's look at what Barry excuse me, uh, Joel Bannerman says here, this section of, the, of his notes here was the Vatican Roman Catholics version of events is this. He notes here, they know this isn't the end of the story that the, that the Jewish God had in mind. In other words, the way they're trying to manufacture the prophecies, the way they're trying to turn prophecies the way they want. All right, just like the whole idea of Revelation when it says, talk, speaking about the coming of the Messiah, that he'll rule with a rod of iron. Well, they got their idea of their Messiah coming, and their false Messiah is going to rule with a rod of iron, all right. It's going to be missiles. That's his rods of iron, okay? But watch what he says. But that doesn't mean that they won't try and engineer their own ending to the story. So what if it, it, was, so what if it is fraudulent? Doesn't matter. That is the game plan, and that is what matters, and that is what Israeli Jews need to be better informed about. It is important for everyone to know what the Vatican have up its sleeve because it directly relates to our existence and our future destiny as an independent nation. This is very powerful for us. This is scheming to get control of the old city of Jerusalem. Friends, they've already done it. They're scheming to get control of the old city of Jerusalem. So you better know why and how the Vatican intends to do this. Once you have all the facts and the chronological record, you will be better informed, deal with this issue and foreign control over Israel's policies, existence, and destiny. They're on a roller coaster ride now. First, you have to realize that for centuries, the Vatican has attempted to obtain control of Jerusalem, which started with crusades. For them to convince the world that the Messiah they put on the world stage is going to be accepted as genuine, they need to perform this play in the old city. Barry goes, I mean, uh, Joel goes on to say, the story of this production is that this Messiah will merge the three monotheistic religions, usher in peace and harmony in the world, and solve the Middle East conflict. The location for this production will be in none other than the old city of Jerusalem. This so-called Messiah that will be proclaimed will be false, a uh, false one, and it will insist that by having a world government, i.e. the United Nations, the world peace and harmony will be ushered in. This will be a lie and a fraud, but never mind. In our world, reality isn't important. Public perceptions are. The end result is the stripping of Israel's sovereignty as an independent nation, giving way to a regional bloc of nations. In the Middle East, Israel will be pressured to uh, accede to these demands by all world bodies and superpowers on the claim that this is the only way to solve the Middle East conflict. In order to the Jews to go along, they will convince them that with the Messiah having appeared for the Jews, it is time to start rebuilding the third temple, what they call Solomon's temple. This is the version of events is widely available through a simple search of the internet, as he claims. But you know, it's exactly what they're planning on doing. The whole stage is being set, friends. When the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, drank in the upper room, Giulio Miotti wrote an article about this. I did an in-depth report how prophecy was being fulfilled out of Micah's own word, or excuse me, Obadiah's prophecy, verse 16, where it says that they will drink upon my holy mountain and they shall swallow down. The nations... But it starts off first in, in the uh, 
masculine plural showing only men would be present on that first communion on Mount Zion. And that's exactly what the Pope of Rome did, men only, in that first time he visited. But a week or so later, they brought in other Catholic members, and it was all nations and all peoples, and both men and women were taking communion right there in the upper room above King David's tomb, and even throwing out the Jews out of the King David's tomb and doing a communion service inside the tomb itself, showing that they had hegemony over the site. I recorded this so many times, friends. All right, now, that, just to give you the background there, now looky here, this here is from Chris D. Putnam, and Chris passed away when he was 51. The Vatican's establishment of full diplomatic relations with Israel in 1993 has credited as an overdue political consequence to the theological changes reflected in the Nostra Aetate. However, in truth, there is much more going on than meets the eye. As early as April 15, 1992, Cardinal uh, Joseph Ratzinger, which was, uh, you know, the Pope before Pope uh, Francis, uh, uh, visited Israel and met exclusively with Jerusalem Mayor Teddy Kolek. The Jerusalem Mayor was quoted previously as saying the Israeli government should meet the Vatican's demand to apply special status for Jerusalem. And Israeli journalist Barry Chamish has been working fearlessly over two decades to expose the conspiracy which, conclude, which includes the current president of Israel, Shimon Peres, and his aide, Yossi Balin, in his book, 2000, Save Israel, uh, Ch Chamish wrote this right here. In March 1994, the newspaper Shishi revealed a most remarkable secret of the Mideast peace process. A friend of Shimon Peres, the French intellectual Mark Hotler, claimed in an interview that in May of 1993, he delivered a letter from Perez to the Pope within Perez promised to internationalize Jerusalem, granting the UN political control of the old city of Jerusalem and the Vatican hegemony of the holy sites within. The UN would give the PLO a capital within its new territory and East Jerusalem would become a kind of free trade zone of the world diplomacy. Hattler's excuse me, Halter's claim was backed by the Italian newspaper La Stampa, which added that Arafat was apprised of the agreement and was included in the secret clauses of the Declaration of Principles signed in Washington in September 1993. Joel Bannerman brings this out as well. Now, Chris actually did his own homework and he did pull up the actual little La Stampa article and <laughs> all the, everything that uh, Barry Chamish wrote was true. It's exactly true. He brings out Joe Bainerman's uh, arguments here. Um, and uh, he said, uh, I mean, just so many things. Let me just read this one here. Uh, Israel's President Shimon Prez, the plan was originally discussed in November 1992, the same time the first meetings in London took place to discuss an agreement between Israel and the PLO, which was probably arranged by Council on Foreign Relations Executive Edgar uh, Bronfman, Bronf excuse me, Bronfman, when the foreign minister Shimon Perez met with the Vatican officials in Rome under the plan, Jerusalem will stay the capital of Israel, but the old city will be the administered by the Vatican. Arafat agreed not to oppose the plan. The plan also calls for Jerusalem to become the second Vatican of the world with the three major religions represented but under the authority of the Vatican. Did you notice that? It's under the authority of the Vatican. But the three major religions would be represented there. And Arafat was willing to go along with it. You know what, you know what caused Arafat to uh, blow a fuse? When he found out they were planning on building the third temple on the Temple Mount. But he also come to an untimely death as well. You step on the Vatican's toes, you won't be around much longer. Not unless God's hand is upon you. But you know, this is not the only thing, guys. I mean, look, look over here at Micah's prophecy right here. And now many nations are assembled, verse 11, against thee that say, let her be defiled, let our eye gaze upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel, for he hath gathered them, them as the sheaves of the threshing floor. All right? And, and this is what we saw. We saw the 70 nations come together back on January 15th. We were there covering that for you in 2017. They're in Paris, France there when the 70 plus nations were gathering against Israel. You know, we're watching prophecies being fulfilled and most people have no idea that they're going on. And this whole idea of the Nostra Aetate that, that he writes about, I forget if it was Joel or Barry, whichever one was writing about this, or maybe it was uh, Chris Putnam was speaking about the Nostra, yes, Chris actually wrote that, speaking about the Nostra Aetate. The Vatican actually 
got the World Jewish Congress, he was able to get with them and have them pressure the Israeli government into accepting a lot of the things that they're doing. They signed an agreement with the Pope of Rome. But you know, he came up strong with the small people. That was the Palestinians, also written in Daniel chapter 11. And now we see, according to this document right here, and this is on, from Vatican Radio, uh, and that's called RadioVatican.va, Holy See Israel released joint statement on diplomatic negotiations. The Holy See in the State of Israel has released a joint communique detailing the progress made by the Bilateral Permanent Working Commission on Tuesday. This is June 13th now, just a couple of weeks ago. All right. A preliminary session to continue negotiations pursuant to the fundamental agreement between the Holy See and the State of Israel, 1993, Article 10, Paragraph 2. Do you realize that Article 10, Paragraph 2 is where the Vatican will come against all of those, everyone. They will combat, is the language used in the Article 10, all anti-Semitism. That's only to justify taking down Iran, taking down Syria, taking down Lebanon. Whatever they de deem to be anti-Semitism, they'll remove. If it's on the internet, if it's a nation, whoever it may be. That's why they made this agreement. And that's why you see Israel, the United States, British forces, whoever it may be, they're all working to draw them into a war and ultimately to try to bring to pass a prophecy that I really believe is going to involve Turkey and no doubt Iran as well that will come against Israel later down, a little bit later down the road. Ezekiel 38 is not going to be this war that's fixing to happen where Russia will probably end up retaliating against Israel if Israel ends up striking Russian forces or killing Russian forces inside of Syria. They are trying to manufacture this prophecy to make it look like that hour is at hand for the coming of the Messiah and it's nothing but a demonic alien being that they're bringing to be their Messiah. Don't think he won't do wonders and miracles? Sure he will. You know, so many people speak about this, and I've done so many videos on this, about Psalm 83. They talk about, is this the Psalm 83 war? No, Psalm 83 is not a war. In fact, all they do is they say, Oh God, keep thou not silence, hold not thy peace, be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies are in an uproar, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. In other words, their leader, Nasu Rosh. Hmm. That's an interesting thing, isn't it? You know, they've actually married their head. Nasu is for marriage or for lifting up, either way. But they've married the head. The Vatican and Israel. In other words, Jezebel just got brought back into Israel. Ahab has married Jezebel. They have lifted up their head now. And so this is what Israel has done. They hold crafty converse against thy people and take counsel against thy treasured ones, or hidden ones, actually. Uh, it's the hidden ones. They counsel against them. Why? They're concerned. What are they going to do about these two witnesses when they come on the scene? It'll cause, it'll throw a monkey wrench in their whole plans for that to be exposed, what they're doing. So they make a, they take counsel about what to do about these two witnesses. Well, maybe they're planning on bringing two false witnesses out to make it look good as if they have their own set of two witnesses. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And they're doing that craftily as well. For they have consulted together with one consent against thee, do they make a covenant? The covenant, friends, is this false peace initiative that they're bringing about, that they're going to force Israel's hands on. The Israeli people will have no idea that they've made a covenant with them. And when they bring this war about and they allow Israel to suffer from it, then the world powers can then force Israel to accepting what the Vatican has wanted all along. The true hegemony over Jerusalem. To get their prize. They'll bring in their false Messiah, the Antichrist, and they will tell Israel, your Messiah is here. It won't be Yeshua. Don't think so. They might claim it it is, but it won't be. That's the sad truth of it all, friends.
sad truth of it all. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I trust this is a blessing to you, what I'm trying to tell you. And friends, do understand, I'm not sitting here saying things just to try to make myself somebody. God knows my heart. I'm not like that at all. But I'm here trying to tell you what's going on. Too many Israelis have lost their lives trying to reveal to you what the Vatican is up to. How they're trying to manufacture, manipulate biblical prophecy, prophecies that will come to pass, but they're trying to manipulate it to make it look like it's their way. Remember, Russia can't be the king of the north because Russia is already the one where tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him, who? The king of the north. And the king of the north, Hatsafon, he's a Melech Hatsafon, he is a hidden king. We don't know where he's at. But we know the king of the Nagiv, the Melakha Nagiv, it's not really a king of the Darum, it's the king of the, of, the, of the Nagiv that is an Israeli leader. They allowed an Israeli leader that got in there that's not for the truth for the people of Israel. You don't believe that? Let me, let me just show one more thing to you, friends, so you understand this. You got to remember what the Bible said about this, because like I said, I love my people, but I am against all of those that are trying to destroy Israel even from within, those that have the intent on breaking up Israel as a nation and allowing the Vatican to take control of it and just rip up the land. This is what I'm talking about. They're dividing the land for gain, for profit. They've been doing it, not just Israel, but the earth, Adama. They've been dividing up all the Middle East. They're doing it again and again and again. Now they're going to divide up Syria. Don't you get what they are doing? Jeez. Where, where is it? Verse 14, I think it is. And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, also the children of the violent among thy people. There's many that stand up against Israel. And it's not just, it's not just the nations, it's not, it's not just the Iranians or the, or the Lebanese, the Hezbollah or, 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 or Syria or Saudi Arabia or any of these, but it's even also the children of the violent among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision, but they shall stumble. Do you know it actually says right there that they will, it's the, it's the sons of the lawless of your people. Whose people? Daniel's people, the Jews, a Jewish person will, there, there's going to be those that are of the Jews that will lift themselves up, and it's plural, it's more than one, politicians that lift themselves up to try to bring about what? The visions to pass. And it's not just Daniel's prophecy where they speak about Daniel trying to bring a reconciliation in with Israel, and that's what they're trying to do through this Mechadesh that the Pope is doing, but they're also trying to bring in the Gog of Magog war. They're trying to bring all these visions to pass the way they see fit, and there's Israeli leaders that are involved in it. That's the ungodly thing. Jeez, friends. By the way, those of you that are watching this on Israeli News Live, I will be airing this on Danun Institute as well. People have got to see this. We've got to wake up. You've got to share it with as many people as you possibly can. This is what's really going on. They're going to fake a millennial reign. They're going to set up a thousand-year millennium. You want to know more about that? You should come to that conference there that we're going to be having in Duluth, Georgia. When my wife speaks on transhumanism, and you'll find out, they're going to try to make your body live a thousand years. They are trying to manufacture all these things, including manipulating the prophecies, just as Daniel told you right here that they would do. And even if you don't want to say marry the vision, just say lift up the vision. That's fine. That'll work too. In other words, they're trying to make these come to pass, but they are going to fail, but not until after they've done a lot of destruction in the process. I'm Stephen Benoon. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, support the work we do here. We need your help. We really do more than ever. There's not, not everybody likes what I have to say. And believe me, when they don't, they let me know. I won't support what you stand for. Well, I will stand for the truth with all my heart and the best way I know how. And if that's what you believe and that's what you support, as someone that's willing to tell you the truth and not just lie to you and tickle your ears, then support this work that we do. We appreciate it. If, if you can't do it financially, just your prayers means a world to us as well. You can do so. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can give there, or you can do it by mail. Either way, it appears here at the end of the 
broadcast right here on your screen now. And also, if you would like, even on our channel, Israeli News Live, just above the subscribe button. Make sure you're on Israeli News Live because a lot of people share the video. So if you're on Israeli News Live, there is a little donation button right above the subscribe button. Thank you. God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you in the United States within about a month. Thank you.